Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Word Balloon, the comic book conversation show. John Suntress here. Uh, this is part two of a 2011 conversation with Rob Liefeld, a reprint. I, I really enjoyed this conversation. We got really into details. That's why it's two parts. It was even two parts back in 2011. And uh, I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, lots of great stuff uh, shared by Rob and uh, his uh, perception of the comic market in 2011. We also talk about a collaboration he was doing with Robert Kirkman and the fact that a lot of his extreme characters were finally coming back. So uh, lots to unpack with Rob Liefeld. Uh, if you missed or uh, didn't see part one on the feed, it's the episode before this. It's already up on the feed, so uh, if this is uh, your first exposure to it, make sure you go back and listen to part one as well. Rob Liefeld on today's Word Balloon. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Word Balloon. This is John Suntress uh, with an important plea for 2023. Uh, you probably read the headlines. Uh, Word Balloon took a sponsorship hit that was pretty significant. And uh, I'm asking you if you've ever been a fan of Word Balloon and considered uh, making a donation through Patreon, uh, a very uh, meager but important subscription, I hope you'll consider it. Um, it's going to be a challenging 2023, and uh, I need your help. So if you like Word Balloon, if you enjoy the content, I'm not going to slow down and keep bringing you some excellent content, but uh, I could really use your help via Patreon, patreon.com slash Word Balloon. If you can afford the price of a comic book, if you can even afford a dollar a month, it would be greatly appreciated and uh, help the cause to uh, keep Word Balloon going at the level and intensity that I've been doing uh, in the last uh, four or five years and uh, bring you a lot more content and a lot of great uh, interviews and interesting things about the pop culture world. Patreon.com slash Word Balloon. I could really use your help. Thank you for your attention, your time, and listening to Word Balloon. It's Faye and the Moon, the latest graphic novel from Franco and the Saturn Sisters. Faye, mourning for her missing mother, sits night after night below the moon that her mother loved dearly. One night she discovers she can pluck the moon out of the star-filled sky. Back safe in her house, she holds it close, feeling comfort at last. Then Faye loses the moon and finds that taking it has awakened ancient monsters, rats, dragons, and more, who hunt for it for themselves. Will Faye be able to reclaim the moon, find her own inner strength, and save the world from eternal darkness? Faye and the Moon comes from the minds of Franco, whose works include Tiny Titans, Superman of Smallville, Archimaniacs, Itty Bitty Hellboy, and The Ghost and the Owl and art from the Saturn Sisters, whose animated works include Sesame Studios' The New Neighbors, Hulu's The Awesomes by Seth Meyers, and PBS's Mira, Selkie from the Sea. Pre-order Fay and the Moon now, available in bookstores and comic shops everywhere, February 21st. Word Balloon is brought to you by Alex Ross Art. Dot com. Alex has been a longtime sponsor of Word Balloon. I greatly appreciate it. You got to go to his website. You will find tremendous art from original work, covers, pages, fantastic lithographs, amazing posters. Every price point is covered and every subject is covered at alexrossart.com. You've enjoyed his iconic looks at DC and Marvel, but also great stuff like his wonderful work on the monkeys, Monty Python. So many other great pop culture things that Alex has put his fingerprints on. His wonderful Flash Gordon poster that evokes the fantastic Dino De Laurentiis, Sam Jones movie. Recently, Alex did things like uh, the timeless Marvel covers featuring great solo shots of all your favorite Marvel heroes. And, of course, his Fantastic Four full-circle graphic novel still available. All waiting for you now at alexrossart.com. Welcome again to Word Balloon. We continue our conversation with Rob Liefeld. Rob will be talking about his work with Robert Kirkman on The Infinite. He looks back on the image years and also talks about the new lineup of books Rob has coming out. He is reviving his extreme imprint for image and uh, lots of great uh, stories and comics are coming back with uh, great creative teams. Rob goes into that extensively on part two of our conversation here on Word Balloon. Let's talk about uh, Infinite yes. and uh, what, what you're doing with Rob. Absolutely, man. Because Bobby it's K, I call him Bobby K. It bugs the crap out of me. I call him Bobby K. <laughs> it kind of fits being from Kentucky. You would be a yeah. Bobby K. How uh, you doing? No, I love that. Uh, look, I, I can talk about Kirkman all day long. I, I, you know, as with everyone else, 
he is the most lovable guy in the business. You bet. Yeah, well, and that's cool. And I know that um, he appreciated you reaching out to him back in the Battle Pope days and saying, wow, this is cool. I can't believe what you're doing and stuff. And, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, think it's, I think it's great that you guys have, you know, found this project to work on together. Yeah. And that's, you know, now there's a case where the two of you are coming together. And I actually, I guess he's saying, hey, let's work on something. And, real, you know, did he come to you? How early on with the pitch did he come to you and say, all right, let's figure this out together? Well, let's see. I think it was 2009 where we had our lunch and we started talking about something that we could do together. But he was literally like, "Let me, I'm, I'm putting this Skybound label together, and it's going to take some time. And, uh, you know, I just think that, uh, that there was that experience. I, I knew it was, going to, it was coming. And so then it was a matter of, well, what are we doing? You know, what are we going to do together? And then that started getting really, that, that was, we started getting serious in the summer of 2010. So it was a good year before the Infinite launch. And there's a couple of different restaurants in San Diego. We just went out during the show and hung out and, you know, talked over conceptually what we would like to do, you know, a couple of things. I threw out there, I could see by the look in his eyes, he was like, shoot me, I, I'd rather he shoot me than do that. And then he threw a couple my way and I'm like, yeah, why don't you just shoot me? Um, so then he was in town for an extended period of time uh, last uh fall right after early early fall i mean he came over with all the walking dead you know uh episodes on disc i I just remember it was before uh it aired and 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 so he was here in the fall and he was here a lot whether it was promotions for walking dead working on walking dead whatever it was and during that time we we uh you know i I won't go (laughs) i won't go into initially like the first few sentences of what it, but it, it was like a it was like a it was like a game of telephone. How infinite started at the beginning of one lunch and and how it ended up at the end was and, and it was literally like no I don't want to do that yeah I want to do that no that's ridiculous no that's, that, I, why would you do that I mean it was kind of like stuff back and forth and then finally I think you know two creators they get it when they go this is what we want to do and so by the end of that one lunch we had the infinite but we didn't have a title and, okay uh, and so then two days later I drove up to L A to meet him. And we're at a pizza place, and I got all my list of names, and he goes, all right, first of all, we're going to call it this infinite. And I said, okay, I'm throwing my list away. That's way better than anything I have on my list. Um, I said, oh, my gosh, I love it. And he's like, yep, that's the name of the bad guy. And I go, it's far out, man. We had no names for any of the characters yet. We just, you know, this guy, that guy, and uh, uh, what everyone was doing. But the concept of, a guy coming back to train his younger self to uh, prevent this, you know, war was the rich material we wanted to mine from. I mean, I just, uh, it's, it's, there's, there's a great dilemma in trying to, you know, teach yourself. I, I, I think, you know, everything, there's always the Mr. Miyagi or the Obi-Wan or the Yoda, but, you know, making it uh, an older version of you telling you how you need to do things. And again, I just told Robert, I mean, I, 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 man, there were things about the 20 something Rob Liefeld that I would love to harness. And there are things about the 20 something Rob Liefeld I would love to smack in the head with a baseball bat. And, uh, you know, and this is your, and, and this is our chance to go back and with this character and he gets to make those same decisions and fight those same battles with himself because uh, obviously Bowen uh, from has come from the future with a strong conviction of what has to be uh, done, and uh, his younger self has been very reluctant to take him up on what he's you know what he has proposed, and 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 has already commented that he feels like a a, a prisoner. So it was that kind of really that kind of uh, cool stuff that was, uh, you know, we're able to, um, you know, that we're able to, what do you call it, uh, explore. And, 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 and sure. we can explore for, you know, a great long time um, because 
that it's again once we had the concept, then it was just dressing it up and making it cool. And we absolutely, I think, have uh, as, as the, I think the I know the fourth issue. I mean, I have it. It's printed. I'm not sure if it's out this week or next week, but uh, you know, we we shipped in August, September, October, November. Uh, the trade is out in December. First four hours, Great. and and we've built up the team, the crew. You know, he's in the present. He's convinced his younger self to uh, follow him, however reluctantly at this time. And his younger self has, you know, uh, broken some rules and 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 gotten some of his will imposed by the end of the first issue. Um, you know, and 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 uh, I, the second arc is going to be even more exciting. And I just you know, I couldn't be more excited. I, I really, uh, you know, the fifth issue is the best one yet. Robert is just, uh, I mean, it's really imaginative. Again, Robert and I will, will, will talk about beats, and sometimes they don't, you know, I won't know if they're coming in in this issue or the next, but, again, I, I'm, 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 I'm not the writer on that book either. I'm just the artist. But I have a say a strong say in the direction. Um, and as Robert's been very generous in acknowledging, I mean, I named pretty much 90% of the cast. Uh, <laughs> he's busy, man. I mean, that guy writes sure. a book <laughs> and, and a TV show. So I'll be like, hey, I think we should name this, this, and this, this, and this, this, and this, and this. He's like, cool. And then he'll go, no, 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 this guy's name is this. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. It's not that he can't. It's just uh, if, if if it works and, it's, uh, and, and it hasn't been done yet, I have nothing against throwing a name in the hat, and again, neither of us are, we share ownership of this right down the middle, so it doesn't matter who does what. At the end, we, you know, equally equally share the fruits of the labor, so there's there's not like, a, oh, hey, man, I did this and I did that, because again, the minute, man, I, I had my list of names, I was going to fight for them, and not one of them was anywhere in, close to being the infinite, but what you know when you hear, oh, that's perfect. Um you know, but 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 my only I said you don't think that's too close to the invincible? I, I <laughs> that's all I said. <laughs> and he's like, no, that's not a problem. And I'm like, oh, okay, but I love it. I love the name. I think it's a great, especially for a what, what you know what we hope to be a, an all you know someday an all uh, encompassing media property. I think it's a great title. And again, you know, he I I wouldn't even I was embarrassed. I wasn't going to pull my titles out. I was like, oh, that just that just <laughs> just skunk any of my names so i will then put that back so no it's a strong psychological concept and i yeah. agree with that it's uh, especially for science fiction and i think uh it's a good use of time travel and and you know that you know you're right going through that idea of i think all of us in our 40s would like to take our our, our 20 year old self and as much as appreciate the ambition and energy and ideas that maybe we're rattling around at 20, you do want to smack him for some of the stupid oh, yeah. things. That, that, no, I mean, flat out. Right. I mean, I, I, I loved the energy and enthusiasm my younger self had, the, the hot-headedness. Oh, my gosh, I, can't, I, I, I couldn't handle that guy. Um, <laughs> and I just spoke about myself as someone else. So, yeah, I mean, go figure. But, uh, <laughs> you know, so, so – but it's, it's obviously a great opportunity to um, – work with Robert who I love. I mean the 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 first time I read uh Invincible uh number one I was like where's this guy coming from? Who's this guy? And and and, and then my comic store goes, Oh he, he he writes the battle book. And I'm like okay, this guy is a relative unknown but he writes like a seasoned vet and he has I mean the plotting is great, the dialogue is great. The cliffhangers are great. He just he had his stuff together at such a young age. And again, I met him in 2003 uh, in Chicago with uh, when I was promoting Youngwood Bloodsport. We went out to dinner. We saw movies. We hung out all weekend. I just met him, and uh, obviously he he you know was a huge Image Era fan. Excited, uh, and I was excited to meet this kick-ass new writer I'd never heard of before who was better than most guys I was reading in comics. Um, you know, so it's um, it's uh, um, exciting. I mean, I, it doesn't... Uh, when I get something in my ma- mailbox from him, whether it's the, the final scripted pages or uh, the, the, the 
plot for five. I'll be, I'll be honest. Issue five was was a completely different story. We had kind of finalized it six weeks ago, and with the, I think it's one of the best stories Robert's ever written. Um, but was not sure it was an, a great issue number five. But then I got really excited that this this could be like the best story I'd ever drawn. Um, and 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 you know I was ready to go six panel grid eight panel. It was a very different style of story. And then issue five showed up and he's like, ah, I changed my mind here. And uh, I was like, this is so well, we agreed to it all, but it's so much better like you know so he threw a curveball but um you know it, it was because issue five was going to be kind of a i don't want to give too much away but it was kind of a pause in the middle of all the action and now it may be the epilogue to the whole series but um the uh you know whenever that is but so boom issue five is just he threw it into a different gear and i mean i'm, I'm, I'm i was drawing it before you called um i mean i've been kind of drawing it all weekend long and uh, just fun stuff, really, really great. And it, it feels modern, but it's got its throwback. Like, feels like I'm drawing a Jack Kirby book. Feels like I'm drawing an early Image comic, and it feels like I'm drawing a Robert Kirkman comic all at the same time. So, you know, I think he gives every book a different flavor. I, I completely agree, and I and that it is that versatility of Roberts that I really admire. And as you say, coming from someone who got it at such a young age and was able to, while cranking out Invincible, come up with Walking Dead. And, I mean, that is as sophisticated as anybody's favorite Vertigo book. Yeah. And it, it just seemed like so left field as opposed to the all-action stuff we were getting in Battle Pope and Brit and even uh, a more adult tone. And I don't mean that in any mean way uh, comparing it to Invincible because I think Invincible is – a really well-written book, and he really understands how to write various ages and various voices. But I just, it, it's the last thing I expected from Robert. And I think in, Infi in Infinite, um, he's tapping into your energy, Rob. I mean, I really think, uh, like Kirby, your art has its own energy. And I think when you are really excited about something, it really comes through in your pages. And I think we're seeing that with Infinite, definitely. And I think Robert knows how to well, I, uh, I really get that, that excitement out of you. Yeah, I, I, issue four is because I, whenever I do a comic, I, I, I pin it up on my wall, so I'm, I'm looking at all 20 pages right now. Um, uh, the 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 it, it, issue three, I felt I, I told Robert I, I didn't. I, I was there, there, I was trying to be restrained in some ways. I wasn't. You know, sometimes you try and be somebody you're not because you think that's who you're supposed to be. And, uh, okay. Or, or because that's what people want out of you. Not not ever talking about Robert. Uh, you know, sometimes you second guess yourself. But on issue four, I was definitely like, uh, um, I it was it was very purposeful that I I draw even more energetic layouts. Um, and and I knew it was coming in issue four. And issue four, I think, is the is the best of the bunch by far. It's not even close. And again, Robert, it's it's also Robert had to deal with me for months saying why isn't there a girl in this comic what is the problem <laughs> why are you know um he got you know real sick of it and now our female protagonist is front and center and it's just a blast and uh and and, and now with issue four the team is assembled and uh all, all the pieces have been picked up and uh it's it, it and it's robert's best script i mean it's uh and so I, mean, I, I think issue four, we both were really determined to uh, end the, the first arc on a high note. And hey, again, let's get back to difficult stuff. Independent marketplace, difficult. We launched a book in uh, in a very difficult atmosphere one month before the 52. Um, I had one prominent retailer who gave me and Robert a lecture at San Diego who would then go out of business, I think, three weeks later in a glorious, you know, flame out. Um, said, what are you guys doing with this infinite? What are you guys doing? Don't you, don't you know all our money is being rerouted to, 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 to the 52? What are you guys doing launching in, in August? And, and, and all these variant covers and, you know, I, I, uh, all my money is, is, is earmarked for DC books. I mean, th th this is not a good move on your part. And, and, uh, and, and I, I mean, I don't have money for this. I don't have money for this. Turned out he didn't have money for anything and he's out of business. But, um, oh boy. you know, uh, uh, it was like, 
I got it. I got that we were walking into a, you know, hailstorm of bullets. Um, <laughs> because because 52 did suck. Uh, um, they tilted numbers. Uh, if I was a retailer, sure. I'd have done some slash and uh, slash and, and move move stuff around too. And, and I know September was – anything that got nipped in September, I know some very successful independent books whose sales had never – ever gone down in years who took a little bit of a dip in September but then flew back up in October I think because the retailers realized um, as I think has always been the case Marvel and DC eat their own um, the independent marketplace the guy who buys uh, Lock and Key and Walking Dead is going to buy it regardless of what Marvel and DC book he's buying um, Agreed. But, but to get attention to get the retailer to give us their support is is really um, uh, it's an effort. It's it's uh it's you have to bang the drums a little louder because there's no bat or spider in the title and that you know that going in and uh, uh, you know so with uh, with the infinite I mean we're we're out there uh, lobbying for votes as it were and and so every issue has to really you know argue make the argument for us and so I'm mean, I'm anxious for Ford to get out there and, and the trade to hit in December because I think those are the best uh arguments we have for our book. Um but again independent market is is uh it was tough a year ago, it's, a, it's tough now. Um you know, M- Marvel and D C comics are the sexy comics with uh you know the big the big brands and that's and again I work for D C, work for Marvel, work for all of them. I get it. You know, I, it, it, I don't say that begrudgingly. It's just a reality. It's just like uh, independent films. You know, so they're great, but they they're a different beast in terms of marketing and and, distribu- and distribution. So understood. What about the uh, and and forgive me because I can't think of a different way of putting it, but the tricks to bolster sales that worked in the 90s that I still see like variant covers and uh, things like that. How do you feel about those now as I, well, an independent? Okay, I, you're asking the wrong guy, and I'll tell you why. Um, <laughs> I mean, it, it, this goes back to my childhood. At When I was 12, 13 years old, and I earned the right to bike you know, 15 miles to the comic store from my house every Saturday and camp out there, uh, when Sounds the new familiar. George Perez, uh, Teen Titans, or the new John Byrne, and yes, I'm mentioning the artist. Um, I was attracted to art first, story later. That does not diminish Claremont, Wolfman, uh, all, all of their contributions. They were brilliant writers. Um, but my obsession was how George Perez drew, how John Byrne drew. Um, if there had been two covers on those Titans and X-Men issues, I would have bought them without... Any hesitation because that would have meant I was getting 20 pages because uh, at least X Men for a while was 17 pages back in the 70s. Sure, and, and, absolutely. But uh, bottom line, in today's argument, I would be getting 23 or 22 pages of my favorite artist. Um, variants, uh, they're, they're a variant. You know, I, I almost on on uh, Twitter uh, put on Twitter Saturday. I was in a comic store, really great local comic store. I was with my boys, and uh, they just wanted to go check stuff out and uh m- this particular retailer hangs the uh variants very high on the wall and you know uh, probably 12 variants from the last week or or, or the, from 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 Wednesday to Wednesday and I got to tell you I mean there's no damn good reason for those variants to exist uh they're not by the artist who did who did the book and most of them were just butt ugly um, and uh, and there's nothing special about them. And the reason they were still hanging there was because no one bought them, and and no one bought them because no one wanted them. And there was a time and a place where variants were special. And I I, I think if you make a great variant cover, you are going to get a nice result. But you're also again the thing that I didn't you know I'd say yes. But what I started to say at Marvel towards the end was, am I the one in 100 variant? Because uh, I'm not interested. And uh, because I would say, they'd say, hey, Rob, you want to do a variant? Uh, truth, truth be told, X-Force, number one, the awesome Rick Remender. Uh, mm-hmm. Was that Opeña? And, and Opeña. Uh, yeah. I found out I was doing the cover, a variant cover to that when I opened up previews. I was not asked. I was informed uh, through the publication. 
And I really hemmed and hawed, and, and that was the last one I did because I found out it was the one in 50, which okay. makes it yeah, – let me tell you, uh, a president of one of the studios up here in Hollywood, <laughs> big studio, called me and said, well, we're buddies. He said, Rob, can I get that X-Force variant from you, man? I can't get that <laughs> anywhere. Man, just can you come up for lunch, and, and, and would you bring a copy of that? And I'm like, that is hysterical. I mean – it's one in 50 means most guys in the LA area maybe got one or two, two at the most. Sure. Maybe they got one and it went to one person. So you go, well, that at some point you go, I'm the bait to hook you into ordering 50 comics or something. Maybe you only wanted 30 of. And sure. so there's a manipulation to the variants that didn't exist when we were doing them. And I, I get it. I mean, uh, I, I like the way DC's, doing their variants, basing it like, if I understand correctly, and I'm sure I don't, it's, uh, you know, you'll get this variant based on your the, the, the number of your lowest selling DC title, which has to meet this criteria. That's great. That helps the lowest selling books. Um, and that's why my Action Comics number one Jim Lee variant was so plentiful and easy to, and, and, and so affordable. Because I was like, oh man, you got a bunch of these, dude. At, at this price, woo! I thought, here, I'm going to have to look at that Jim Lee Action Comics variant on, you know, online to, to enjoy it. And I was like, wow. And they're like, no, no, no. You know, these were really accessible because I just had to order them in the amount of my lowest selling title, which was a very healthy number. I, I just like variants, um, again, to be better. accessible. I, I learned from Jim Lee on Twitter last night. He's doing a, because I don't read full stations, I don't have time, um, <laughs> but he's doing a cover to Flash. I'm like, hot diggity. You know, I'm pretty sure that'll be very accessible to me. It's Jim Lee. I want, I'm a big Jim Lee fan. Always have been. I want as much of his art that I can, as, as I can attain. And the easier it is, the better. And I think they found out that that's a good way. But, but getting some no-name guy to do some variant of some character that has no purpose is just crass manipulation that is not going to work out for you. It, um, I mean, the industry, again, uh, dude, my, my retailer buddy was telling me, like, the stuff that's going on right now, like, uh, hey, we're shipping you 50% more of your book. And, I mean, in some cases, some of these new books, uh, I'm not sure if it's the 52 stuff. I don't think any of it's DC. But it may be these new Marvel books. Some of them are, like, 90 cents on the dollar. I mean, they're, they're making them super affordable to move large units of them. Because my guy was like, oh, yeah, I got, I got boxes of the Hulk. He goes, but uh, it cost me nothing to buy, and I got all these variants. So the whole variant market, again, um, we we did variants at Image, but they are in a new, uh, uh, a brand new, you know, level of uh, it, 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 it's changed in terms of a sales tool. And all I would say is, hey, make some good variants, you know, make make me want that book. But uh, I'm not sure. Uh, what do you mean? I'm not sure. Let me. I'm quite certain that 90% of the variants that are out there are crap. Um, and and because they don't. Okay. An infinite variant by the creators of infinite would seem to be something desirable. Understood. Um, uh, uh, if there were two, a Cory Walker variant of in, of Invincible makes sense to me because he created Invincible. Um, now. A Dave Finch drawing of Invincible makes sense to me because Dave Finch He's is an Dave awesome Finch. artist, and and Absolutely. I I want that art. Um, yes. But but again, you know, again, those meet certain criteria. Suddenly, um, you know, uh, just a run of the mill variant of any icon with really no association uh, that 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 I'm gonna have to pay ten to twelve, fifteen bucks for. That's a different, you know. Understood. That, so so that, that's w w certainly we did variants, and we launched the Infinite with a ton of variants, and, and I did almost every single – I did do every single one of them. Um, and I have people who have brought every single one of them up to me. And, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and you know, New York but, – but I'll tell you, New York Comic Con, I said, well, since I'm going off – some of these are – you know, some of these were regional variants, like Lone Star bought some variants. So I'll grab ten copies of this. Because maybe the guy in New York was, didn't have access to the copy in, in Texas. Well, mm -hmm. sure. I've never brought brought a box of comics and left with the entire box empty. And in 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 uh, 
in New York, I was like, wow, the people are like, I haven't seen this, I haven't seen this, I haven't seen this. And all my infinite variants, just gone. And, and you know, again, it speaks to two things, that independents aren't carried as heavily um, as, as uh, you know, the, the, the big two. And, um, you know, uh, getting out there and putting and promoting yourself, you know, you'll expose yourself to an audience. Conventions, you know, they are really... Having done as much as many of them as I've done, they are really exposed. They are a way to finding new and return breeders in in a way that um, is remarkable. I mean, they're out there, they're lurking, and they could reintroduce themselves to you and your product at any time, or introduce themselves completely. Like my buddy, who is just at Wizard of World Austin, said there were people walking around saying, "Wow, there's a lot of people carrying comic books at this show." <laughs> and you go, you know. If you're not if you're not there carrying the comic books, then they don't know they exist. Um, you know they 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 they, they bought a, a a ticket to go see Burt Ward, you know, and then they find out that oh my gosh, Burt Ward played a comic book character, hot diggity. Um, you know, so, I mean, again, that all these shows have a function, and you know, I I haven't been to a bad convention in years because they literally they they are a way to to reach people. And uh, so, you know, I know I've digressed, but variants, I think the right variants are great. You know, would I buy a Todd McFarlane variant to spawn? Yes, in a heartbeat. Um, you know, I, I, it's, it's for me, as because I'm now I'm talking as the consumer that picks it up and puts it back. Uh, it has to make sense, you know. Understood. And I'd also say, too, um, I've always appreciated the fact that, again, going back to you at conventions, your lines are always massive. I think you are uh, very accommodating to your fans. Uh, I always see you hunched over. In fact, there have been times I've tried to come over to do an interview with you, and the line's just too big. And to your credit, you're like, you know something, man? I'm here for these guys. We'll find time. We'll talk. And I'm, and I'm, I'm glad that it's finally happened. But that's, I, I really have. I've always appreciated well, that I, about look, you. And I it's, really appreciate it. Look, the, the bottom line is the fans are the – I mean, they, I don't have a career without them. It, 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 sure. It, it costs me nothing – to say that, and 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 yet it's the truest thing that's going to come out of my mouth. I mean, I've been drawing comics since 1987. Uh, was fortunate to break in at a young age, but having put 25 years in the rearview mirror, you just sit there and you go, uh, "This is really humbling." And again, I speak to relevance. And look, uh, it was sometime in the summer. Uh, I, I don't know what I. I, I, I Maybe I was watching Back to the Future uh, on, on TV, and, and, and I was like, hey, man, Huey Lewis in the news, you know? I, I, remember, I remember I really liked him. So I went to my iPad, and I hit my Pandora button, and I, you know, did my little Huey and Lewis in the news station. And you know, they, <laughs> they throw that bio uh, on Pandora of, you know, whatever act you're listening to. And it was shocking to me that Huey Lewis in the news had about a six-year career. Knows it. Yeah. Yeah. And, no, and, I was radio all that time, man. I saw them yeah. from the start to the finish. And, and I bought those albums in high school. I, I, I loved their, you know, uh, just brand of rock and roll and just upbeat. Sure. And, and, and yet, man, when you think about it, 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 I mean, they had this, you know, window of opportunity and they, they filled it as best they could, but it ran out. And by the nineties, they were gone. And, uh, and, and, and again, you just look at act upon act upon act, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. So relevance to me has become – I started this interview bringing it up to you. It, it matters to me in terms of uh, staying in the game. And I broke in with a lot of guys. I, I, I mean, I, it's up to, you know, you do the research, you figure out who broke in in, the, in, in my era, but a lot of them aren't, aren't working. And they're not uh, – and look, at the end of the day, this is – it's a privilege to draw comics and to be able to create these comics and a privilege to have people uh, think that your work matters enough to, 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 to buy it um, and to buy it with any sort of regularity and to enjoy what you do. And, I mean, the guys who forget about that and lose sight, um, they always pay the price. And, uh, you know, my version of that was when I was running my studio, I had drawn the least that I had ever drawn in my young career at that time. And I did lose touch 
because, uh, you know, so making sure these 20 books came out that month. I mean, at, at, at Extreme's Peak, we did 22 comics a month, and we held that for about 16 months. Um, we were we were shipping six books to the printer a week. I mean, it was a massive production endeavor. Um, Eric Stevenson, Matt Hawkins, both you know of Image Comics and of Top Cow. I mean, they can tell you. I mean, it was it was great fun, but hard work. But you know, I didn't draw as much as I wanted to, and I realized I had to realize again towards the 90s, do I want to run a company or do I want to be go back to being an artist and a creator? And, and there was no question where my longing was. And that time I took off from 2000 to 2003, I, I, I've still got pages I've never... I mean, I did entire Youngblood stories that I haven't seen print. I drew for myself. I drew... I, I probably drew short stories with every one of the characters I owned at the time. Um, Kaboom. I mean, not at the time. Characters that I owned, period. Um, Kaboom, War Child, Rejects, Youngblood... I like a lot of short stories. They're still in the drawer. They haven't been printed. They will eventually in collections and such. But, I mean, I kept, you know, I kept working. It just wasn't, I wasn't okay. officially doing anything for anybody. It was, and, and that's great to, to draw without, it was it was what I needed to draw without any sort of uh, pressure or deadline, as opposed to now where I, without my deadlines, I'm, I'm done. I mean, every day it's like everybody needs something somewhere. So, wow, I really got off base. But No, but it was fans, interesting. Yeah, stop I mean, it. That's, that's, that's okay. That's, 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 we we you are, we the fan creator relationship is interesting. We serve each other, you know, and that you know, um, uh, the, I try to service them with the best work, and and they try to service me with their. I'm trying to to, to get them to give me their loyalty, and uh, and I do that by giving them work they enjoy. I mean, it's and and we've seen the the comic racks are as crowded as they've ever been. Um, in, in a down economy. Um, yep. In some ways, you know, the, the secret code of comics is out. I mean, I've met a lot of people. I mean, from screenwriters to, uh, to, to um, what do you call it? Uh, 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 Storyboard the, 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 <laughs> Trust fund kids who are ah. like, hey, man, I got the money. Ha. I can I can do a comic. Ha. And they're all finding finding that comics is a great, powerful way to get your story in people's hands. Um, and, and so, the, the, you know, it's a crowded marketplace. And, uh, you know, I mean, let's, you know, Marvel's fighting for shelf dominance. DC is fighting for shelf dominance. Uh, Image, IDW, boom, everybody's fighting. And uh, so, I mean, it's a scrum, man. It's, it's, it's like the mosh pit every week. <laughs> There's some weeks I go, oh my gosh, I can't believe how many books are coming out. Because you've got to stand out in a crowded marketplace, and uh, you know, so it's it's you better put your best effort forward, and uh, and on the fly you better be able to make adjustments. I mean, and 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 the greatest thing my kids do for me is to show me, uh, is to keep me young, and you know, Cartoon Network is always on, and Disney XD, and so I'll just sit down and watch. Stuff I normally wouldn't, but my kids, they, they and and through their video games and everything else, um, I, I, they're like my saviors. I'm like, you know, oh my gosh, this is awesome. I would be so old and decrepit if I didn't have my kids keeping me fresh. But you gotta, you know, keep applying, you know, new new visions to what you're doing. So, and again, working with somebody like Kirkman and working with Sterling has been refreshing in in that way. And and trust me, man, there's guys. I mean, there's tons of guys. You asked me earlier about icons. I'll, I'll tell you, there's talent that I am dying to work with, and hopefully I can hang on and, and continue to live so I can work with some of these people in the years to come. So, do you, uh, you, you know, I, and I don't want to take up too much of your time. Are, are we okay to talk about Extreme still, or are we. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, dude. I'm sorry I'm talking for two hours, but go ahead. No, no. Rob, it's Rob. I'm telling you, people are going to love this, and you know how long I go with Bendis okay. and people like that. So okay. this is nothing. This is a drop in the bucket, man. We're fine. Do you mind if I if I take a quick uh, bathroom break real fast? Can uh, I, yeah, for two dude, seconds. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. All right, I'll be right back. Thanks, man. Hold on. Okay. Yo. Fantastic. No, this is great, man. And honestly, uh, your no, your your tangents are welcome. They're all they're all really good uh, topics that I think people will be very interested in. We'll so don't sweat it. Well, well, talking about extreme and, and also some of the the other stuff that you've got coming up. You've made big announcements uh, at New York about what's coming up, and it sounds much like 
that 2000 to 2003 period, you've got interesting inventory that I think people are going to be very excited to see, some Alan Moore stories yep. and, and things like that. Yep. And, uh, yeah, like bringing back a lot of your uh, your characters with, with new product. Well, so talk yeah. about that for a second. Um, well, the, the extreme stuff is something that we have wanted to make happen uh, for a while. But, again, I became really resigned to the fact that it just had to be the right talent um, or, or it just wasn't going to happen. And uh, I think that, you know, when I started talking with Eric Stevenson about this two years ago, and we kind of made we, we made an agreement to go forward and to start, you know, putting this stuff together, uh, I mean, we made great strides uh, in terms of getting the right guys on the right books. And, I mean... Every time I see pages from Glory or Profit or Bloodstrike, uh, and and I mean Eric's Supreme stuff that he's doing, and uh, and then the Young Blood stuff. I mean, I, I get stuff in my mailbox every day, and I'm just thrilled. I think uh, again, somebody like Brandon Graham, which was Eric Stevenson's call. We had had we had a idea of how we wanted to proceed with profit and it was to throw him into a uh way into the future. Um okay. uh you know we 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 liked the uh a huge fan of all the Heston apocalypse uh, apocalyptic <laughs> films. And, absolutely um, Omega Man and uh yeah, yeah. Sterling Green stuff like that Sterling absolutely. Green, Planet of the Apes uh Planet of the Apes, Omega of course. Man all that stuff. So we uh you know uh Brandon, his first issue, uh, it, uh, there's a reason Profit's coming out first. I'm going to tell you right now, that book is loaded with awesomeness. It is, uh, it's just great. And, and again, you, my, my, my thing that I told Eric is we have to work overtime to educate traditional Profit fans that this isn't that book. It's, it's, uh, it's as vertigo a take on, uh, on, John Prophet, as you're going to get, it's not the same guy with giant shoulder pads and a sword and headgear blasting through a window, firing under a bunch of shock troopers. It's <laughs> you know, um, and it was made that by design. It was again the vision was exceeded by the efforts of of Brandon with his script and then Simon on the art. And the you know the first two issues are gorgeous. Uh, they, they they are very European graphic novel, you know, styled. Um, very, you know, the art. Brandon himself is very, as a writer and an artist, because he draws. I don't know. I I just don't know that people really know a lot about Brandon, Brandon Graham from his um, King City stuff. And they're going to mm -hmm. learn who he is, just like people kind of learned about Scott Snyder from Batman. And now they're scrambling in Swamp Thing, and they're scrambling back to find out who he is. And same thing with sure. Jeff, Jeff Lemire. I, I think Brandon is on the same. He will be in the conversation like uh, Snyder and Lemire uh, when, when Profit uh, ships. I think it's it's just a damn good comic book, and it's about a guy out of place, out of time. Because look, why I always liked Captain America was the Rip Van Winkle of it all, and mm -hmm. I really tried to hew to the Rip Van Winkle of it all with John Profit, um, and. Uh, and in the early issues, waking up out of the sarcophagus, and there's this woman that looks exactly like the woman that he was in love with, and yet it's the girl's great-great-granddaughter, and she's... I mean, it, th th there was a love story there. I, I, Rip Van Winkle was just a sad story to me. Just a really sure. sad story. So, Prophet is... retains the Rip Van Winkle of it all, but with a great futuristic setting, and, and tons of mysteries, because... Again, John Prophet is awakened and is got a mission to fulfill uh, that is being revealed to him as he goes along, and in some really clever ways with some old revelations. I mean, some some revelations of some old characters in there. So I, I think I'm really excited to get it out there. I think it's it's just been executed better than we could have possibly imagined. I say the same thing about Glory with Joe Keating um, and Ross Campbell. Again, Eric sends me all these sketches last, I think, January. I was at Wizard World, New Orleans. I was in my, show's over, I'm in my hotels, my buddies were just, 
watching I think the football playoffs and in my inbox Stevenson sends me all these drawings from Ross Campbell based on Joe's outline and I flipped and I'm like oh my gosh if we can lock this guy down let's lock him down and because uh, I loved it it had this I call Ross's work Euro manga it looks like <laughs> a great manga comic with tons of European Mobius overturns and a little throw a little Jeff Darrow in there as well I mean it's just beautiful art and I, I just love and I love how beefy he's made glory um, she's not your standard, you know, sex pot Amazon. She's, she's got some meat on her, and and she's thicker, and uh, I, but but her face is very youthful, big eyes. I mean, I just love the, the the art, and and again Joe's story. And then in New York, they showed me like the third and the fourth issues, and my head blew up. And 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 I would be buying these books if they were called Amazon and Future Time Traveler guy, um, you know. <laughs> So, so it's not just that you're like, hey, Rob, you're such a homer. No, um, I get, I've gotten a lot of proposals for this stuff, especially since um, the announcements were made. Uh, sure. The box is full of proposals, and, and nothing's been greenlit because we have a, you know, this this stuff really is very well done by the guys who are doing it. Um, Tim Seeley has always wanted to do some of these extreme characters, again, like Kirkman and Jeff Johns and these guys who grew up. Most people don't know. I have a, I have a, three years ago, Jeff Johns gave me a story he wrote of Youngblood, a 15-page story, as a teenager. He then sat me down and showed me all his Youngblood designs uh, <laughs> for for uh, for Youngblood, and I'm like, Jeff, this is killer. I'm still negotiating with him when I can print that Youngblood story because I'll draw it. Fantastic. I'm gonna draw, I, I will draw it myself. I've told him. That's great. But, I mean, these guys, this stuff hit them at a key. It hit them the way the Uncanny X-Men. Cockrum and burn stuff hit me. And uh I understand. You know, Tim Seeley, great blood strike proposal, great blood strike comic. I mean he brought um he brought the artist on board. I mean just from head to toe, great stuff. With Young Blood, we we're looking at a couple different um artists. I was doing layouts on the first couple issues. Then a guy who I'd worked with a couple of years ago named John Malin, I said Try out for this. Blow me away. And he stepped up to the bat because we tried doing a Youngblood book that was not traditional Youngblood, which was more, I would say, the Joe Casey stuff, not so much story-wise, art-wise. It was more, again, that Kevin McGuire, Justice League, wink, sure. wink, laugh, laugh. And I had my diehard fans. And, again, I listened to these guys, and they told me wherever I went, New York, Texas, um, New Orleans, Los Angeles, uh, uh, Boston, Philadelphia, they just told San Diego, they just said, I'm not liking this new series. It's not Youngblood. And I go, really? And they're like, yep, it's the first thing in years. I, I'm, uh, I'm, just, I'm not picking it up. And uh, it's not true to Youngblood's this, you know, badass, you know, government strike force team that they happen to be celebrities. It's not a book about Youngblood being celebrities. I go, okay, mm-hmm. you're right. This book does kind of heavily favor the latter part of that. And sure. So when I talked to Stevenson, I said, this book has to meet this criteria. The average Youngblood fan wants this. And boy, when John McLaughlin sent us his treatment, I mean, again, I was sitting on my iPhone, sitting in the car as my son was finishing up his uh, basketball practice, looking at him out in the court, it was last, you know, literally a year ago, November. Comes up, proposal. Read it. I'm like, did Grant Morrison write this? It's way out there, but, like, it's so imaginative, so action-packed, great mystery. I mean, the first thing he's like, oh, Photon, who is one of the lesser-known Youngblood characters, but has been there since the first issue, one of the aliens that crashed that um, the, the government has given sanctuary to, and put on the Youngblood Mm -hmm. team. Photon, we find out, every 10 years, his race changes sex. And that is why that (laughs) Photon is now a woman and not a man. And and he he gave the basis of, like, fish and how their organs change. And I'm like, you had me at hello. I'm in. (laughs) And there's a bunch of standalone stories in Youngblood that have subplots that are building to something. Um, 
but really, I, I was just blown away. So again, we got into conversation with John and his star. I mean, uh, again, he had he's one of the you know in, in, in Hollywood they write a script and then they hire another guy to take a pass at it and then they take a pass at it and then they all get their names on the movie and everybody you know <laughs> hey this half hour of the movie's mine hey this ha-. anyway he wrote Black Swan but two weeks ago he sold uh, the film version of the TV series Kung Fu which uh, Bill Paxton from Big Love and Aliens is uh, is directing and so I read about this go he, on he is, yes he, he is just killing it um in 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 terms of uh, you know, he's not just blowing Eric Stevenson and Rob Liefeld's mind. He's he's blowing, you know, the Hollywood hipsters' minds as well. And he's a great writer. He's and I'm, again, I'm like, how did we get this guy? And again, <laughs> huge comic book fan. Always wanted to write a comic book. Or the beneficiary on Youngblood. Um, when Eric Larson landed in New York, he had drawn the third issue on the plane of Supreme. His third issue, and he sat Fantastic. there and he gave me the stack, and I looked at it, and. Eric, I what Alan Moore established with the supremacy, the idea that I mean to this day I, I remember the time Mark Wade and I we didn't really, really like each other, but in the summer of '96 he said if Supreme isn't the best damn comic on the stands I don't know what is, and I'm like wow high <laughs> praise from Mark Wade holy <laughs> crap he loves Alan Moore Supreme <laughs> like so the uh, the supremacy which in Alan's first issue anyone listening establishes much like your favorite run my favorite run on the x-men is uncanny x-men uh by burn and it's the burn and claremont run that run when they're done with it it's like those characters drawn in that style they go to this imagination space to hang out with the kirby x-men the Neil Adams X-Men, everything that's gone before them, they all, you know, I mean, again, there was the, 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 the 50s Supreme, you know, had the, yes. had the, the sweet oiled hair. You look like Fonzie. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, you know, uh, uh, the 70s Supreme, the, there was Sister Supreme, who was clearly the black exploitation version. I mean, <laughs> Alan was on fire when he did this. Um, and, but I always was like, okay, 90 Supreme, my Supreme, what, when I was writing the book for the first year, uh, angry, jaded, arrogant, believed he was God, thought men were beneath him, um, you know, had his own brand of justice, snapped criminals' heads. I mean, very. it was the ultra-violent Superman. What if Superman was an a-hole with the whole premise of the original? Sure. Well, I'm like, well, 90 Supreme wouldn't be real happy about being told that his run was over. And if he were to break out, he'd kick all these guys' asses. And I did a one-shot, Suprema, in 2006, and <clears throat> Suprema's flying around, and she gets attacked by 50 Supreme, uh, Suprema, and they fight, and then in the last two-pager, two everyone from Supremacy is out, and they're surrounding her in the sky, and, you know, like everything at that era, I didn't follow it up. And, uh, but it, it, so Larson calls me and says, Hey man, what if, uh, 90 Supreme, Eric and I have never had this conversation, never had any conversation on Supreme. Hey man, I really want to do 90 Supreme, uh, breaking out and taking it to all these other Su- Alan Moore Supreme versions. Cause it's like, there can only be one, but at the same time, Ethan Crane, who is his, our, um, Alter Ego is uh, is, sep- is a separate entity. They are no longer one and the same. And Ethan Crane is obsessed with rejoining the two of them at the same time. Now I'm giving you wide brushstrokes, and, and, and the, the weird thing is I'm now reading this story in uh, the Jason Aaron Hulks where Bruce Banner is trying to reconnect with the Hulk who's, uh, who's been separated. But yes. what, what that story doesn't have is all these other Supremes <laughs> and in typical Eric fashion, because he's got such a wicked sense of humor, um, I won't tell you what happens that, that, that makes it very difficult for these other Supremes to function. Um, but, you know, I don't want to give anything away. I wanna, uh, that, that's the broad, very broad stroke. But Eric goes, okay. I want 90 Supreme and Alan Moore Supreme to coexist and to have it out. 
And at the same time, Ethan Crane is trying to reabsorb it. Look, I think it, it, it really comes down to the whole Billy Bats and Shazam. What if anybody who does this kind of stuff, it comes down to, they're, they're the most famous alter ego or separate personalities merged, sure. separated. So, but Eric's artwork is phenomenal. And I'll, I'll tell you that Stevenson said, I think Larson was getting bored. And he said his Savage Dragon pages have never looked better since he started doing Supreme. Interesting. He's, re- he's re-engaged. And uh, he said everything he's doing is, like, just looking fantastic. Uh, <laughs> the guy on Supreme, he does the rough pencils, and we have an absolute outstanding finisher who I've, tried to, I've been trying to get to – work with for years. He's he I met him through my Rob Life message boards. His name's Corey Hamster. Another guy who sent me samples in the late nineties. Was doing some inking for Avatar press and uh <clears throat> I just uh I didn't use an inker. I, I saw all my stuff from pencils for like ten years. And only recently did I get back to um using inks and inkers especially to fulfill all these deadlines. Um and you know I finally realized the benefit of having an inker it took me a great deal. Um, I was pretty stubborn. But I wanted to work with Corey. Well, Corey loves Eric's work. They work phenomenally together. And I mean, it's uh, so Eric does the full art chores on Savage Dragon and then brings his unique layouts and, and design sense and then his um, his rough pencils, which honestly I've seen what's going on in the comics right now, but they'd be, you know, pretty tight pencils for anybody else, but for Eric, they're rough. Um, and and the artwork just looks phenomenal. I mean, I, I, Supreme is going to uh, that. That's the book that you, I mean, people are just not going to be able to resist that ride. He's finishing Alan's story, which dovetails directly into um, that. Alan's last issue had all the Supremes battling all the <clears throat> uh, Darius Daxes. So it was like a mm-hmm. hundred versions of Supreme against a hundred versions of Darius Dax. Well, Eric takes that to what for him would be his logical conclusion and then uses it as springboard for his new, his new stuff. So, I mean, you understand I'm a huge Eric Larson fan. And, and, and again, the guy's uh, achievements go, do not go. They don't get as much credit as they should because, you know, uh, I said to Todd, you know, Todd McFarland, God bless your brother. You did 200 issues. Of Spawn. It's, it, you achieved what you set out to do. But where Eric has gone one better than everybody else is he drew every single issue. And wrote every yeah. single issue. I mean, it is. Uh, Todd had a brilliant has has been a loyal, uh, you know, publisher of his own creation. It, it, Todd, Eric has created every single page, and that's the other thing. I was terrified. Savage Dragon fans were gonna be like, "What are you doing? Ruining my comic!" <laughs> but the thing is, Eric, I think just like myself, has tapped into this well of energy that we have in our 40s. I think I think you get to 40 and you go, you mean Kirby didn't start doing Fantastic Four until he was 43? Then I, greatness must be in my 40s. But so we all Absolutely. delude ourselves into thinking and we're using Jack as our, you know, uh, springboard, but it's kind of like, I can do way more work than I'm doing, and especially in both Eric and my, our, my case. Our children are in school all day long now. You know, there's no kids at home to distract us and the and the and sure. the over into their kid stuff, which is easy because we're big kids. So we're just, you know, being responsible adults, cranking out a ton of work. But uh you know, like I said, all all, all these all these extreme books um were the pro- I mean they they took over a year to find uh you know, the right the right voices. Um and uh I love everybody. When I mentioned the Joe Casey Young, but I'm proud of those. I'm glad they exist. They didn't resonate the way that they should have and could have, but <clears throat> their chapters in that book, I'm glad they exist in whatever Young Blood supremacy they stand alongside. The work I did, the work Alan Moore did, you know, it, 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 it's every every chapter of every kind of character is to me to be celebrated on its own merits. I, I think Prophet is is a breakout book. I think Glory is a breakout breakout book um, from brand new talents. And I and and and, and again, the, the, is that not possible? I, obviously, with Nick Spencer and uh, with uh, the guys who are doing Luther Strode, forgive me for forgetting their names, but they are th- these guys are bursting on the scene with really no previous uh, resume, 
and they're doing it their way, and they're proving to be great storytellers. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I just, we could not have a better line of books. And, and again, I'll just, I got an email from, I have a couple of guys who, who are, they literally fly to every convention appearance I go to. They own giant, ginormous stacks of my original art. Okay. They are invested in me in like, uh, in, in a way any creator would like die for. Um, and they saw the announcement. They, this one guy, uh, because of some health issues with his family, couldn't come to New York. But his head, head exploded. And he's like, oh, my gosh, and I've been all over the net. And, and people love this extreme thing, man. And I generally don't go searching message boards. It's not healthy. Um, Understood. <laughs> uh, positive or negative. You, you, can, you know. Sure. But, I mean, let's be honest. I, 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 I wrote an article, and I really said, I can take any one of your sacred cows, whatever they may be or whoever they are, and throw you into a message board that eviscerates them. Um, sure. So, so, you know, it's, 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 it's 90% negative, that stuff. But the love and the support is, has been overwhelming for these extreme books. And now we have to do the hard part, which is we need to uh, <clears throat> give them room to be successful in a fickle market. Again, with, with uh, um, the independent market is, is, is struggling. And, uh, you know, I just think that's where digital helps. But we would prefer that retailers have these books. And, you know, we're going to have to bang the drums really loud because there's a whole bunch of people. All, I keep telling you how many conventions I go to, but, and, and it's true. And I always get asked, where's Bloodstrike? Where's Profit? Where's Glory? When are you going to do Supreme? Without a doubt, uh, Supreme is the most requested one, more so than Youngblood, because Youngblood's been revisited a couple times in the last decade. Sure. Supreme has not been revisited uh, at all, uh, other than I said I, I did a Suprema one shot. Well, she's not Supreme. Yep. And uh, she's the big. They want the big dog. So I, I know there's an appetite <laughs> and there's a desire out there for this kind of stuff. And I look at something like Irredeemable, or I think that's the name of the book. Or um, yes, yeah, Mark's book, absolutely. Yeah, and, and it's very Supremeish. Uh, and what we sure. started out doing, yeah, look, we're all building off the, you know, Superman uh, template, the, the original concept of this one yeah. super god. But, um, you know, no one had made him sinister and, and an a-hole until, <laughs> um, you know, all, all the other versions were this noble super god. And yes. I think the first one was like, no, 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 let's get something straight. I'm more important than you are. I can lift the planet. <laughs> so, so, and again, Eric has taken that to the absolute extreme. And it's, uh, sorry for the pun, but um, the, the <laughs> thing is, I'm really excited. I'm doing variants on all these books. Um, you know, it's, it's Eric Stevenson's support and uh, putting together uh, the creative teams. <clears throat> on profit and glory specifically or just he has a great nose for talent and for knowing what people will, you know, uh uh kinda kinda function at their best on. And he's okay. that I mean I, I think uh Brandon Graham is the perfect guy. Brandon Graham would not be the perfect guy to write Supreme. He's the perfect guy for profit. And again I just you know, um today uh, the Hunger Games trailer came out early this morning. I watched it. I haven't read the books. I, I, I want to get familiar with the phenomenon. Um, but in a couple of the different uh, websites, uh, entertainment websites, they're like, you know, this recalls like the dystopian futures of the 70s, you know, that did so well. And again, uh, invoking the, the, the Heston movie and, uh, that, that, that I was talking about in regards to profit. And I go, hey, that's exactly what we're tapping that vein um, but again, both books are gorgeous. I mean, as art books alone, but the, the stories that, that Keating and, and Graham have come up with are, I think they're, and again, they're not, you're not going to read these stories anywhere else. With Wonder Woman, uh, again, you got an Amazon, and then you got Glory, who's an Amazon, and you go, when the Wonder Woman relaunched, I go, man, did we miss our window? Is this going to blow us out of the water? And I, I mean, I cornered Azarello in New York and slobbered all over him. There was my favorite <laughs> book of the relaunch was Wonder Woman. Um, I, that that was that is my. I mean, I did not know Wonder Woman could be so good, and uh, and and yet I believe Glory is completely, you know, uh, on on its own 
stands on its own two feet. They don't conflict. They're completely different myths and legends and, and, and comics, and ours is quite violent as well. And, you know, apparently we can't show swastikas uh, <laughs> in Europe, So because uh, all the swastikas got blurred out in the previous catalog last week for the world. Okay. Hey, and Joe Keating was like, I've always wanted to have a book that had controversy. I said, well, welcome to the club, buddy. But, um, <laughs> so, no, I mean, look, uh, these and, and we are going to be offering a ton of the original extreme material via digital, um, some free, some for purchase when this stuff launches. To, to, again, to uh, the, the cost of getting all these trades out there would be, uh, I, I believe, prohibitive for publisher and retailer. In terms of hey, suddenly you want a bunch of glory hardcovers? Um, it's just and, and we couldn't slap them together fast enough. But we have um, put together key issues for digital to sample um, when these books hit. And our we, we gave away the New York preview book digitally for free, and it went over huge. Again, the digital offers a brand new way to uh, entice people. And, and um, you know, so we're trying to use all platforms to drive people to go buy this stuff. Um, so, I mean, we're very excited, and hopefully there can be a second wave of books because um, we do have plans for another, uh, I mean, that extreme catalog. I mean, I, I was in my prime. I had all those names and concepts, you know, <laughs> since my grade school days and was able to spin them all out, um, you know, when we started Image. And again, they've all, you know, everybody has a different favorite. You know, I'm already getting, where's Brigade? Where's Brigade? Where's, you know, well, where's this? Where's that? And you just go, okay, just, just chill out. Just chill out. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. So you got, you got to give us some time. Um, so, you know, again, I could not be more excited to be doing this uh, with Image. And again, you know, it's not a, uh, the, at the time that I had to pick and choose, there were uh, a several publishers, one of which who had gone out of business since, but who were vying for this catalog and and wanted to make this happen. And I, I just we wouldn't have gotten the same product had I gone anywhere but Image because Stevenson and I, you know, for people who don't know Eric Stevenson, the publisher of Image, uh, was my editor-in-chief of the entire Extreme line uh, from 92 to through Awesome, which is like 98. So he was there for every comic um, that went to press, and we worked great together. Working with Eric was uh, that he he was one of, there, there was a handful of people that I knew I was going to miss every single day. Um, and uh, so when, when, when I chose not to be a publisher anymore and not to go that route, uh, you know, I knew Eric would be one of those guys I missed terribly. And again, uh, it's not surprising the track record he's had and image because again, it, it's easy. absolutely. Uh, uh, I mean, it, love to hand out accolades to people who don't, you know, get enough of them, especially. And with uh, this last year and the last couple of years, from Morning Glories to Chew to uh, to um, uh, that non-player one shot, which was yes. brilliant, to Luther Strode. Mor- Moriarty is a great oh, book, absolutely. Moriarty and all, all these. I'm, 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 um, Gosh, there's a couple that were coming out during the spring that were fantastic. There was like a vampire mob story by Tom Coker. Um, great. I mean, the, the, there is just some fantastic product being put out by Image under Eric's watch. And, uh, you know, so now we're getting the benefit of him, uh, you know, really being hands-on with this line. And, again, he's, he's made it very clear in, in his interviews and stuff. He's invested in this stuff because of the past that he had with it. Um so, uh, you know, it's, it's, I'm really excited, John. I'm really glad I got a chance to um, talk it up on your show, too. Always My man, I'm happy wanted, to... Always wanted to do your show, brother. Oh, oh stop. You're, you're oh, a good please. man for saying Well, you're very kind for saying that. And honestly, I'm, I'm thrilled for you, and I think that this is that kind of third evolution where, you know, first you're a creator that gets big writing or drawing for the big two, then it's creating your own stuff, but again, you're doing it, and now it's that third level where it 
feels like your stuff, but you're handing it off to these other creators. And it has that challenge of being something new in the new creator's hands, but also with the tie to the past in what, you know, makes it great. I mean, this is why, you know, we appreciated and welcomed Carrie Bates and Kurt Swan working on Superman as opposed to Siegel and Schuster. And the same goes with Lee and Kirby on the Fantastic Four. Right. And you see what, what Hickman and, and the guys are doing with Fantastic Four today. So, yeah, it is it is that kind of evolution of you you see you see what makes the character great in the hands of others oh, and absolutely. they find a new way of telling the story so that's yeah. that's really cool and you got great like you said having Eric Stevenson with you kind of picking these guys i, I was thrilled when Seely was announced as part of it too cuz oh, Seely's a you know yeah a great guy and and i think one of those smart creators like you say that hasn't you know gotten the Scott Snyder uh Jeff Lemire you know accolades yet and that's just because the right project hasn't been there yet for him. Tim, I did not give him enough love. His blood strike people will love. I mean, it's a gorgeous book. And he brought uh, the whole team together. It's his vision. Um, again, these guys submitted stuff to me. I read over everything. Some stuff like Prophet, we had uh, a very, you know, we wanted to go sci-fi, far-flung future. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, and trust me, that doesn't even begin to tell the story. I just don't want to blow anything else by saying anything else. So you got to read the comic to find out what, 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 where it goes from there, because that's just the beginning of the sentence. But with Tim, okay. you know, we had a couple of different people propose Blood Strike. Tim's was the standout, and I really enjoy him, uh, art and 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 writing. Huge hack hack flash fan, and I just yep. uh, you know the book benefits again from him. And and, and yeah, I I agree. Tim is um, deserves to be more in the commercial conversation than he is. And again, that gets to how crowded the marketplace is how limited yeah. the promotional windows are. But this will be a big deal for him. I, I, I'm, I'm excited for him. And uh, But, no, it's, look, I'll tell you one thing. It is fun being the the, um, the grumpy old veteran. I, I love this stage of my life and my career more than any other. Um, the, the, the young uh, Rob that was launching Extreme Studios, he knew he was in over his head, and he knew that he was a boy trying to lead men, and it was hard because – you could just I, I and Eric remembers and so does Marat Michaels and a lot of these other guys who were there at the time. They remember I would be in my office and I said they would listen to me more if I was forty. And they're like, Now you're forty. Um <laughs> you know, so uh because it was hard. I'd be out there giving direction to twenty eight year olds from a twenty three year old or a thirty two year old or a thirty five year old and I'd just say, Hey, this is this is um um I remember Norm Ratman, who has become quite a superstar anchor for DC Comics. Dan Jurgens guy, absolutely. Store. Oh, he's a great guy. Met him in a comic store, showed me some sketches, was totally huge fan, wanted to come work, said, you're not, you don't have the chops to be a penciler. Try inking, here's the tool. And then on about his 10th or 11th page, I just went into him one day and I said, dude, you need, you, you, you're doing a really good job. You've mastered a commercial line, but you need to break down background, foreground and middle ground and here's how you do it and um i just you know i it was i was uncomfortable like saying hey step aside let me teach you because i knew i was young and i didn't i had a lot to learn myself but i felt like i knew the very basics of which i could apply to making commercial comics at that time um because i was making commercial comics but it was uncomfortable and now grumpy old rob oh i love him (laughs) He, it's so fun, again, because it's like, yeah, that sucks. And you get to be the guy that goes, eh, it was better in my time. And then they go, really? And then I go, I sold $5 million. What would you sell? Yeah, it was better in my time. It <laughs> so it's like, I got the trump card too, man. I got the trump card I can pull out any time. Oh, really? You think you're the hot stuff? Ha, ha, ha. That's nice. I used to do that in my sleep. Um, you know? It's just, it, it's, it, you go, hey, we, uh, we, had a great time. We helped form uh, and shape comics as they are today, and um, you know, uh, it, it's it's. Uh, I was sitting in one of the big leagues at Marvel a couple years ago. I'm like, why are you in such a good mood? I said, you know why I'm in such a good mood? That Deadpool's going to be 20 years old here in a minute, in, in a couple months, and his costume has never been changed. And in that same 20 <laughs> years, you've changed Spider-Man's costume about 15 times. <laughs> Hulk has been red, blue, purple, and, and, and as well as green. Um, you know, Doctor Strange, even Doctor Strange, 20 years, it, at some point he put on a full full mask that concealed his face. And I said, uh, 
you know, Thor had like has had like 20 armors since yep. uh, the 80s, and and he's had a beard, not a beard. I said, Deadpool, same damn costume. Still Deadpool. And, uh, and and I said, and you know what? And I, and if I want to get reminded of it, all I have to do is do it on the street at the convention, and 30 Deadpools will tackle me and say, Daddy. Um, <laughs> I'm becoming more comfortable with. Um, because they're cool, man. It's like, it's just awesome. But, you know, I sit there and I, and, and again, you know, John, in your old age, you appreciate, you go, you know, sometimes you just get it right. And, 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 and there's a lot of talented guys out there and, and they all are, are deserving of their place to shine. And if you, if you get that, you know, chance and, and you get something and it, and it lasts, um, whether it's Deadpool or the extreme catalog or, you know, Jeff Johns at the height of his Green Lantern, cha- Fame goes, hey, come up to my office. I got something for you. Here's my Youngblood script. Oh, and I, and I and I did some punch ups on it since then. And you're like, <laughs> is this happening to me? Like, <laughs> it's it's a great place to be. It's fun, but I feel like I'm like I'm ready for the fight. Like I told you earlier, this industry is a scrum. I mean, you got to get in there and re- be ready to bang elbows, knees, and uh, and 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 put your put your best on the page. And then you got to go out and you got to sell it. It's not just you can't just do it and, and, and let it find its way. You got to fight for space. And uh, and and again, you're g- 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 this is part of it. Your you know podcast and your your attention is um, trust me, man. I, I, like I said, I'm not kidding. I was like, ah, it's awesome. I finally you know <laughs> get to do the word balloon. Woo! Oh my! So uh, so <laughs> exciting. It's exciting. Well, and if I may, because you guys do much more creative things, but the thing that I've learned in my 40s is, and I can hear it in your voice and your enthusiasm, and Eric must be feeling it as well, you guys have put, I always go back to Malcolm Gladwell and his whole theory of you've got to put 10,000 hours in before you really know what you're doing. Yes. And I, really, and I, and I think that you guys have put your 10,000 hours in, you've learned from your mistakes, yep. and now still have the skill and the talent with the knowledge and the experience and now is when you're dangerous. And now yeah. is when it's exciting because uh, the door's really open for you. As opposed to chasing jobs, you, you guys are making your own opportunities as well. And yeah. I think you guys know, you know, you've learned from your, your mistakes. And so, like you say, you're ready for the fight. And you know that it is a fight. So I think you're more prepared as opposed to the wonderkin who's coming in his, in his 20s and has the creativity and the energy and the excitement. But you know where the trap doors are. So that's an advantage. And unlike an athlete who has to worry about breaking down and stuff like that, I think artists, you know, that's why we see, that's why Kirby was able to oh, excel absolutely. in his 40s. You know, so, it, it so is, no, it's, it's interesting. Exactly. Our bodies don't break down. And uh, that, that, I know I tell my kids all the time, you know, because we all watch sports together and we talk sure. about the shelf life of any athlete. And, again, a creative person, whether it's a Spielberg or a Peter Jackson, you know, I'm sure if 20-year-old Peter Jackson – uh, but if mid thirties Peter Jackson can go back and tell twenty year old Peter Jackson, hey, you're going to make all these Tolkien books into visual masterpieces. <laughs> He'd be like, what? You know? Exactly. Um, and uh, and then you'll angle your way back onto the Hobbit. Um, so you know, I mean, it, it's 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 exciting because again, the create we we do um, creative. We have that, and, and it is uh, Eric. Definitely, like when you said, what Eric's doing with Supreme and Dragon simultaneously is is, is stunning, um, and it's so funny. Uh, first time I met Todd McFarlane, he had come up to me. I've told this story a couple times, so it's quick. But bear with me. He he was with Eric Larson in San Diego. I think it was 1987 that summer. And he said, "Oh, so uh, I've I've met all the L boys." And I go, "What? <laughs> oh, the L boys? The L boys?" Uh, the whole industry is uh, L boys right now, and I said, "We can make." He goes, "Lee, Liefeld, Larson, and Lim, the L boys. <laughs> You're the new boys at 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 at, at Marvel. Everybody uh, has L. Apparently, if you don't have L, you're not getting hired." And I go, <laughs> "This guy is crazy." Um, and I had followed his Infinity Ink stuff, but we spent the whole like me, him, and Larson did the town lap that night, and I remember going up to the elevator, going up to his room. And he goes, you know what I love, bud? Because, I mean, I've been buying this stuff since 84. And he goes, bud, well, you're working on, like, is this arm good enough? And is this leg, is this leg drawn right? 
<laughs> I've already done that, bud, and I'm putting extra details on the windows and the buildings and the backgrounds and someone step ahead of you, bud. And uh, it was that confidence, like, you're just a young punk. And, right. Uh, and and I'm, I'm the vet. And I'm going to take you under my wing. And I got to tell you, Todd did take me and, uh, and several of us under his wing and give us great, not just comic book business, but, but, but business savvy. And I'll tell you, at New York, there were three guys I sought out, three guys who I know who are in renegotiations with their company. And I pulled them aside and I said, I know you're renegotiating your contract. And if you don't tell this company to make you the richest person in comics, you are missing your window. And I told this guy, everything you do sells through the roof. I, I, I only buy this when you draw it. When you leave, I leave. Um, and apparently, so does the rest of the crowd. Stop being nice and get what you deserve because they're giving it to somebody else. And it was that same initiative that Todd, because that's the kind of stuff Todd would call. Hey, bud, uh, you want to work for free or what? Uh, this is uh, time for you to get yours, bud. You, you, you want to pay for your family or what? Um, and he's like, oh, yeah, but uh, your inking rate is uh, a little too low. And, uh, you know, I'm not going up and telling now, – now, Todd did say one time, he goes, oh, bud. He goes, I just talked to this young artist, and I talked to him like he was you like four years ago. And he got off the phone, and he repeated everything I told him. And there was this same pause. Then Todd goes, and they fired him. Oh, <laughs> He goes, oh Jesus! He goes. I guess that's uh, not. Uh, it's not one size fits all uh, advice, bud. <laughs> and, I, and I said, "Oh my gosh!" And I'm like, you know. So it's not like I went and grabbed some young rookie and said, "Hey, rookie, uh, go jump off the cliff. It'll be awesome to watch you wipe out." No, it was like <laughs> it, it, I think some of these guys in comics, they're a little, you know, that they're being taken to advantage of and, and and sometimes they need somebody to go hey buddy you are very important to what you're doing you're actually the most important equation and uh, this ain't novel if it was novel you know your writer wouldn't need you to draw so let, let's get a little sharp let, let's you know let's uh let, let's let's be a better negotiator this time around because you should be doing better and you know that's the community just taking care of itself and understood being an old man, Rob, is is pretty fun. And well, when it's not, you know, I promise to talk to you when it's not fun anymore, too. And I'll be like really well, better. Well, that's good. I appreciate that because honestly, this I I really like where this conversation has gone in a lot of directions, and it's because of your comments. So that's great. I'm happy to be along for the ride. I wanted to ask: Is this environment? Are you able to look back at when you guys made your stand and created Image? Um, you know, when I was a kid in broadcasting and I saw cable mm -hmm. happening, when I was in high school, I was like, oh, God, if I was just a couple years older, they might take me seriously if I were to walk into CNN and try and get a job there or uh -huh. some of these other places that were just happening. Now, where the Internet is, I see a similar playing field but different. And again, being in my 40s when it was starting to happen and stuff, it was like, Okay, now I'm, you know, I am an adult and I am an ad adult broadcaster. I can make my own inroads. Do you see the digital playing field in a similar way compared to that strike for independence? It seems like uh the playing field it's different, but it also seems like there might be more opportunities in this new environment than there might have been when it was a direct market only environment. Oh, I, 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 I 100%. 100%. Okay. Um uh, we'll, we'll do uh, the short version of that. Um, there's always been this verse in the Bible that really, you know, just threw me for a loop about about when Jesus died and the zombies coming out of the ground. And so last year, one weekend, I just did a comic strip called Zombie Jesus. Well, <laughs> I couldn't get it out before Halloween, so I uploaded it on my site. And that afternoon, Time Magazine had linked to it on their website. Fantastic. And... and what you're saying is what I experienced. You can idea to network in, 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 in really, if you want, 24 hours. And I just kept uploading Zombie Jesus until I ran out of material for that chapter. Um, <laughs> and then 100 people call, you know, tried to sue me because they said that their Zombie Jesus was Zombie Jesus. And I'm like, and there's <laughs> YouTube videos and everything else. I'm like, okay, maybe I should step away from this. Right now, so 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 in the whole experiment, I 
put it out there, got a huge, got a huge hit. Uh, got a producer that said, "Hey, hey, I want to do a Zombie Jesus." Uh, I mean, called me from Hollywood, and I was like, "Yeah, that's not the version I want to make." Um, you know, it, it, it's it's uh, but but in a nutshell, what, what I would say is not a priority project. Got a lot of exposure and a lot of heat in a very short window, and I'm with you. Digital is exciting because how fast it travels, how far it travels, and um, and I believe that the I still believe there's a resistance to it because the powers that be in in, in the, the mass market don't want to give it its due because they know if they embrace it 100 percent, then they're embracing the Wild West. And, yes. And 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 so it's better for them to hold it back as being viable right now, but it's way more viable than I think any other platform. I mean everything. Is happening on the Twitter has ruined everything. I, <laughs> I, I agree. I, my, I like Twitter, my Twitter feed is my live minute to minute. I've programmed it to all sports, all comics and entertainment and politics that I enjoy. And so my <laughs> ticker tape never ends. Um, by the time it's scrolling on the screen on Entertainment Tonight at 7 o'clock, it's five hours old to all of us. Absolutely. And you see how these people are using it for the Occupy movement. Yes. And, I mean, look, it's a and 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 the Arab Spring. I mean, this yes. it is a it is a deadly weapon. I do believe that creatively. I mean, again, I, I have people proposing, yeah, I want to do this with your stuff and put it online. I can't manage all the proposals that I have at the moment to take advantage of some of this stuff. Uh, I just don't have the time, but I know it's I know it's inevitable. So I'm with you for creative people. Look, look at Ty Templeton's response to Frank Miller. Yeah. Instantaneous, within a few hours, carried everywhere. Um, and, and again, look at Frank Miller's original comments, and and then you've got this. You know, that wasn't available five years ago, um, because the outlets weren't as open and 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 uh, open to it, and as driven to 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 run that kind of stuff. And now, I mean, look, I, I think because of digital comic books, fifty two, the fifty two. Let's go back to that. 52 sure. does not get enough. Uh, I mean, look, again, DC stuck their necks out. They did something deemed controversial and doomed to failure. And if I had a nickel for every non DC, uh, everyone who was not involved in the 52 on the summer convention circuit was given an earful, like myself, who was part of the 52, I was given an earful for everyone not involved on how terrible it would be. Other people yep. obviously took to the airwaves to look right into the camera and say it would fail. And you go, are you kidding me? And to me, it was inevitable that it was going to work. It was the right move at the right time at the right place. It felt like Image Comics when we moved, when we did. Um, and it was sometimes you just catch the right break, and that is the malaise of the industry. Um, I don't know. that uh, When Image Comics happened, remember, there was Todd and his $3 million, Rob and his $5 million, and Jim and his $8 million. <laughs> They went 3 5 and 8 and what, what I'm getting to is they spent the next year trying to sell $1 million. They were like, yeah. we don't want the talent to drive these sales. And by, as a matter of fact, we don't think they did. We think that the gimmicks drove the sales, the trading cards, the five interlocking yep. covers. Yep. And what they did, when Image launched, I believe there was an acetate Power Man Luke Cage cover. I think there was some glow-in-the-dark stuff and some foil stuff. Yep. And by that time, it wasn't about the creators. It was about, hey, look, we wrapped so and so in this sweet, you know, foil scratch and sniff. <laughs> and we said, hey, actually, we have a new idea. And <laughs> and and people went, wow, because you know, Jim Lee brought a new excitement and level and a new look from top to bottom of X Men. Todd absolutely redefined Spider Man, top yes, to bottom. Indeed. And X Force was all a bunch of characters that didn't exist two years prior to that. Um, yeah. So it was, you know, image happened when there was literally a, a bit of a malaise. Be, that there was, there was, eh, okay, okay. So Spider-Man, X Force, and X-Men happened. Then what's next? Well, I'll tell you what wasn't next. Was the acetate Luke Cage cover um, paying the rent? <laughs> okay, that that wasn't going to move the needle. And and what happens is that that with image, I mean, with, with DC fifty two, I think people were bored. 
silly. And DC sure. stood up and said, we have this lightning bolt. It's called DC-52, and we're going to let it out of the bottle in September. And people, you know, oh, that lightning bolt's not going to strike. You know, uh, it's going to hit in the wrong place. It's it's not going to make it. it. Boom, it was a storm they unleashed. And it's grabbed a whole new excitement. You can see that the rising tide did lift all ships based on these numbers, drove people into the stores looking for stuff. Every publisher, even though I keep banging the independence, independence thing, I mean, we're getting exposed more because of their gigantic initiative. And it's, um, you know, uh, but it, the Internet was so important in that. All of the news sites that carried it. I mean, it was a daily, that beast, DC fed it perfectly. And they, look, a few months before they announced what it was, I was contacted and told that, um, you know, we really want you to be active on the Internet about this. We know this is second nature to you already. We really are hoping <laughs> the people who, who are really into the social networking embrace this because we're going to be targeting all these audiences online. So it was sure. definitely, and, and then the digital comics part of it. I mean, I, I think the digital downloads and availability and stuff is is so important. So you know, I, I think DC has embraced it by far the best. And right now, I mean, I, 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 everybody else is looks like they're running to catch up. And uh, the thing that's sad is, I think what DC did is give a really good battle pl- uh, game plan to how something should be managed. And I think it's not being paid attention to because if it's embraced by somebody, if somebody of, of these other uh, publishing factions were to emulate it, it would be conceding, you know. Uh, that DC did something right. Yeah, and it's like, hey, you know what? Um, when they implemented the zone defense back in the, uh, in the <laughs> 2001, you know, in 2001, and Shaq yeah. was like, I can't believe they're implementing the zone again just because of me. <laughs> um, every team that played the Lakers implemented it. So it was like, oh, yep. man, I'm not going to do that because Sacramento did it last night. We're going to play Shaq straight up. No, it was, hey, here's this wall we just painted around you. It's like, what is oh, – I'm sorry. They just told you that they re-implemented the zone. DC just said, here's a great page from the playbook. And i got to be honest. Mm, I, I think it's a, a page that that maybe even could be improved upon, even even though I'd give DC straight A's across the board, you know. Um, but 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 it's it's kind of like no, we're gonna stick to business as usual. I don't I don't think you can do business as usual right now. That's my opinion. So uh, understood. And uh, that 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 that's like I said, man. I got a uh, you know I, I'm I'm a strange cat, but uh, I, I'm never without my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, so Clinton, I, I again, you're honest about it, and I think I appreciate your observations because you've been through enough sea changes, some that you've created yourself. To uh, you got a good shit detector, right? I mean, Rob, I think I really think that's obvious, and I think that's why. And and you're right. I think a lot of competitors to DC, especially the way that they have been laughing at DC and some of their own promotions are the last ones to admit that this thing is, is actually working oh. and, and will and now will probably follow suit and not come out and say they're doing, they're doing the same and, thing, and, but they are. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it, it, like I said, it's exciting. It re, I mean, I know retailers and let's be honest there, there are, they are our partners in publishing and they were hurting. And a lot of them got a huge swell, uh, uh, you know, at the cash register where they needed it. And, uh, you know, it, it, it was definitely, it, it was necessary. Um, right time, right place. And, and it's like, I, we should just, uh, keep, keep it coming. I'm going to tell you right now, a little, you know, a little stump for image comics and a perfect way to wrap it up is, I mean, look, image sure. comics turns 20, uh, in 2012 and, uh, do not believe for one minute that there won't be a lot of activity and a lot of celebrating, um, what we have achieved, you know, uh, as 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 the the strange collective that Image Comics is, but the strange, <laughs> but ridiculously, you know, ridiculously successful collective, and uh, you know, it's going to be exciting. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to say there's a a DC 52, you know, initiative in there. That's, I'm not I'm not trying to foreshadow, you know, that I, I will say there's some really interesting. Um, things that, that haven't been done that we're going to be participating in that I, I think are 
it'll 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 be a perfect way to celebrate you know 20 years of Image Comics and uh it's very it'll be very exciting can't wait for 2012 Excellent man and I uh our next conversation yeah I want to talk about more about Image and stuff and really that was I I really wanted to ask you more about the old days but you've been very generous with your time and I really appreciate hey, man. again you have again next week just call me. <laughs> let's seriously, like in a couple of months, let's let's absolutely plan on a on a new conversation, okay. and then and I would love to do that, man. And and really, thanks for your time. Okay, thanks and, again. So that's what it sounded like back in uh, 2011 with my uh, first talk ever with Rob Liefeld. We met each other a few times at conventions, but we finally had a chance to do this very lengthy word balloon. I hope you enjoyed it. It's going to be a lot of fun this week on Word Balloon. On Monday, I'm talking to John Lehman. Catching up with John, of course, we're both loving uh, Star Trek Picard Season 3. We're going to talk about it. we got to talk about it. Can't help it. We're too big of Star Trek fans not to talk about it. On uh, Tuesday, during the day, I'm going to have a great conversation with Rom V. Catch up with him. His epic uh, detective Batman story is just wonderful. And looking forward to talking about that and a whole lot more with Rom V. So uh, join us for that word balloon on Tuesday and uh, we'll see how the rest of the week shakes out. But uh, those are the firm plans coming up in the days ahead on Word Balloon Live. I hope you'll enjoy it. Until next time, thanks a lot for listening. Word Balloon is a copyright feature of Shaky Productions. Copyright 2023. Stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy.